Hi there, my name is Dav Parry and I'm a solution engineer here at iTential. In today's video, we'll be looking at how it's possible to loop over child jobs within workflows. I'll show you the different options available to you and how easy it is for you to do this within the low code design canvas that is IEP's Automation Studio. But first, if you'd like to be notified of more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I have a couple of pre can workflows that I'm going to be using during today's tutorials. One makes request of the US government's National Vulnerability Database, NVD, which we use as part of our software upgrade use case, and another that performs the configuration compliance on a list of devices. I won't go into detail in this video of what those systems do, but I will include links to both in the video's description if you'd like to read more about their features and benefits. First things first, before I start to show you how to loop over child jobs within a parent workflow, I'll just review the different ways it's possible to define input parameters within jobs. One way is to define one variable as an object, which you then pass all of your data to. Those of you who have designed workflows to be initiated by iTentials Ops Manager will know that to capture the data passed to the workflow from Ops Manager, you must define a variable called form data in your workflow and your workflow will then query the specific data field it needs from that object. The other way is to define individual fields as job variables, which would then be exposed to the parent workflow. I'll be using examples of each in this tutorial as there are subtle configuration differences required when looping over them. So the first example is where variables will be defined as a single object, and you'll see what I mean when I try to run the example workflow that I have here which is the uh, run golden config compliance workflow. So if I just come up here, run it from the designer, press start, what you'll see is that it's prompting me for a single object. And if we were to look at the form that uh, the workflow has been designed to read from, um, it's a pretty simple form. It prompts the user for the device name, tree, et cetera, et cetera. And then, um, and the define is just a single text input. Now, if you were to, replicate this user input but allow users to specify a list of devices um, you know we could use the drop down form element here and um, which we've done and then allow them to define it as a multi-select so if i was to then view what that form data looks like um, you can do that very easily by just entering some data and then that will then show you the um, object that is passed to the workflow. So in this instance, we have device name as an array rather than a string. So if I now come back over to the workflow designer and I create one, which I just created earlier, to bulk run this, what I would need to do is, first of all, I would need to get my array to drive the workflow. And in this instance, it is the device name. So I just add a query to the workflow. So I specify my job variable, which in this instance is form data. And then I specify my input parameter. And then I then add the child job to the workflow. Again, I'll connect everything up. And what I'll do is in this drop down list, I will enter my workflow and you'll see now that it's prompting me for form data. So at this point, this is where you decide whether you're going to loop over the workflow or not. By default, the option is no, but um, you can then loop over that in either a parallel or a sequential way. Pretty self-explanatory. Parallel means that the workflow engine will execute all of those um, the jobs in at the same time. So once you select that, what you'll notice is the parameters for the job, uh, child job change slightly. So the first thing it will do is it asks you for the um, input object that's going to drive the array. And then it then uses a transformation to map the data to the input parameters that's expected. In our instance, this is form data. So very easy to do here. What we'll do is that you'll notice there's a button here. You hit create JST. And what that does is it then prompts you for um, input parameters that are available to you. So the first thing to know is that the current value is the individual element of the array. If I come back to my form studio, 
in this instance, device name, the current element that we're looping through is a string called core Atlanta one. And then the second time it will be core Atlanta three. So that's what current value is. The next thing we want to do is we need to create an object that looks like form data. So we would then simply pass in another object. So I can copy this here, paste that in. We can also call this form data. It really doesn't matter too much. So, yeah. And then what we will be doing is we will be setting the current value to use the device name. So actually what will happen is, is that this will return a um, string instead of an array of devices. So to do that, we come to object, we use set property, the object is form data. The value is our loop, our loop value, and we want to use device name. And then the object is that. There's a quirk with this particular workflow that asks you for an ID, but we can just pass in this as um, an empty string. So we can just do that. So super simple. And if I was to run this JST and specify a value here, we'll just use um, Core Atlanta 2, for example, and then run that. Um, what you'll see is the input parameters has an array, but actually what it's going to do is it's going to return it as a string. We can ignore the ID. So this is what will be passed down into the child workflow once we run it, which is exactly what this workflow needs. So if we then um, run compliance loop, we hit save what we can then do is okay so that's then prompting us for our form data object which we've already defined and if we now hit save uh, we save this particular workflow what we can then do is initiate this workflow from ops manager using the form that we have here. So again, just to save a bit of time, I did that ahead. So here you can see we have a bulk remediation workflow and the form that we'll be using is um, the form that I showed you previously. So what I'll do is I'll just run this and it's pre-initiated with those two devices and uh, I'll just select that. And if I hit run, what it should do now is it should initiate that workflow. And what you should see is that it runs these um, uh, two times because that's how many we have them in the workflow. Sorry, in the form. And if I go down here and drill into the workflow, what you'll notice is that there are um, the input parameters have been mapped correctly to the JST that we're passing in. So here you can see the variable map, <coughs> which maps into the visual power pool. So that's how you do um, loop through parallel. And sequential, as I said, um, uh, doing sequentially more or less the same. But what I want to do on this one is this is the one that calls the NVD. This one is um, subtly different in that this, the workflow here that's being initiated um, has defined its input parameters as individual strings rather than object. What I mean by that is that when I run it now, oh, not that one. When I run that now, you'll see that it's expecting four input parameters. So it's expecting vendor platform version and severity. So if I come back to my workflow here, and to save a bit of time, this is one that I, I did earlier, is that you can see here, this one is looping sequentially over um, this workflow. <coughs> and you'll see that it's um, uh, looping through the OS version and it's calling this transformation. If I look at this transformation, you'll notice that this one's slightly different in that instead of having a single output, there are four individual ones and not too dissimilar from the, the parallel is the current value. And then I've then added some additional input parameters, which I'm passing in. 
to to map to vendor platform severity, et cetera, et cetera. So um, just a subtle difference there in terms of in terms of instead of returning a single object, it returns individual ones, which are then mapped to the expected input parameters in the child job. The other thing as well, which is subtly different, is that what I'm looping over here is not um, a string of arrays, but it's actually um, an object. If I was to show you um, one that I ran earlier and I looked at the object just before running the child job, what you'll notice is that it's actually um, looping over an array of objects. And just to make that slightly easy to see what I'm doing, um, I've just pulled it out into this JSON editor where you can see that it's calling in um, uh, an array of objects and within that you've got um, the version and then you've got some of the metadata and stuff which we're using as part of some of the reporting that we're doing later on in the workflow. Not so important for this, but um, what it means is that here before I map the OS version, which is a string, I just have to query it from the driving object. In this instance, you'll see here that it's um, OS version. So I'm just querying this value and that's what's being mapped to the version input parameter for that child job. So slight subtle difference in the way you either loop over um, a string of an array of strings or numbers or whatever, or a particular object is you just have to, you can use the JST to query that data out. So that's it. I, anyway, I hope you found the video informative. If you did, please click the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment sections below. And until next time, I'll see you later.